Good day again, the viewers, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. My name is Philip Sidney, your host. 22nd of May is International Day of Biological Diversity. And with me in studio to discuss that topic is Ms. Janelle Gabriel, who is a technical specialist attached to the OECS and of course the Environment and Sustainable Division. We also have to her right, Mr. Alwyn Donnelly, who is the Acting Chief Forest Officer. People, welcome to the program. Thank you. Very Thank happy you. to Thank join you. me in studio for such a great discussion today. Thank you so much Very for much having Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Janela, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. uh, from a technical specialist standpoint, mm -hmm. how would you describe biodiversity? Mm. Well, the term biodiversity um, refers to all of the living things, the places where they are found, and it refers to the, the variety, the mix, the different kinds of living things that we have. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the tree or, or the plant, but it is the variety of different types of trees. If you have a mango tree, you have so many different kinds of mango trees. Mm -hmm. You have julie and long and, and tin quem. Mm -hmm. So that kind of diversity is very, very useful for our resilience. It ensures that if there is some disaster, we can bounce back from it. And biodiversity is a uh, really an indicator of how resilient and how strong our environment is. So on a day like th the 22nd of May, mm -hmm. when we celebrate International Day for Biodiversity, we are really taking a look at how resilient we are, how much diversity we have in our environment as a, as a means of conserving it and ensuring that we can use it for generations to come. Great. Alwyn, from a forest standpoint, can you... Can you I don't know what Janelle just said. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Um, biodiversity. We can dissect the expression, mm -hmm. you know, biology and diversity. diversity. Yes. Um, it's biology meaning life mm -hmm. and diversity meaning the range, the extent, you know, of that life, all life forms. So, just to add on what um, Janelle has, you know, just said, we were looking at from the minute organism that we cannot see with the naked eyes. Mm -hmm. We need um, microscopes, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to see. And, I mean, we can talk about viruses, yes, <laughs> you know. As we thought of that, we've done a lot of that. Good or bad. Good or bad. From these microorganisms to, you know, insects, mm -hmm. to the mammals, you know, the birds, mm -hmm. and um, we humans, and of course, you know, the the trees, the plants, plants. the the the, the mm -hmm. environment, you know, that support that helps to support, you know, even um, the animals. Mm -hmm. um, there is that interconnectedness, mm -hmm. you know, when you remove one part, mm -hmm. the other parts are affected Correct. in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, from a forestry standpoint, I mean, while the forestry division is responsible for wildlife and, you know, trees uh, on crownlands on forest reserves you know um, biodiversity extends you know beyond that so for us the wildlife mm -hmm. you know and um, a lot of our focus would have been on the you know the larger wildlife species 
you know, the, the birds, the mammals, but also the insects. Yes. They are also very important, you know. So for us, all those life forms, you know, together. Definitely. Definitely, you know, and um, that has implications, you know. The trees support supported by um, you know the soil right. you have the water resources yeah, so th there's an know, interconnection so the interconnectedness yeah, 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 definitely, yeah, definitely and, and it's also significant for mm. we humans you know um, depending you know on those livelihood, resources the livelihoods mm -hmm. the water which is, mm -hmm. which is, which is life mm -hmm. exactly. yes there but you the theme I have before me for this year <laughs> is we are part of the solution. Yes. And that again, mm -hmm. I was based on what I, 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 I am seeing here, it builds up from last year's theme, yes. all right, yes. which mm -hmm. is our solutions are in nature. Yes. So yeah. can, 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 you, can you speak to that? So this, this year's theme, um, like you've rightly stated, evolves from last year's. Um, last year when we f were first starting to deal with the pandemic and all of the, the crises in the world, climate change and everything, um, we started looking towards biodiversity. We noticed the trends that a lot of people were, they were now on lockdown and now they were doing their backyard gardening mm -hmm. or they mm -hmm. no longer had their jobs so they were going out and fishing or they were going into forestry and so on. So we started looking that at nature as the solution this year now we are looking inwards so we are part of the solution mm -hmm. and so sometimes you you might give these nice technical definitions of what is biodiversity and people still don't really get it they don't understand where they fit into it mm -hmm. they don't understand what am I doing with this information what can I do about it maybe I'm, I'm a housewife or I'm a farmer or I'm you know I work in an office what can I do about biodiversity so this year it's the our opportunity to see ourselves as part of the solution mm -hmm. in whatever field whether you're a student or a researcher, w whether you're a farmer, which is a very important profession in, in terms of biodiversity, or fisher, whether you're a person who manufactures products using biodiversity, we all have a part to play. And as we talk a little more, we'll see what some of those specific recommendations are, because human beings are also a part of biodiversity. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But before there are solutions, of course, there are challenges and That's problems. That's so can we identify some of the challenges? Mm -hmm. Well, in the first place, you know, I mean, you'd have identified, uh, you'd have had, you know, certain issues or, or problems, you know, that has come about. Mm. Um, and it is because of, you know, our dependence, you know, on the, the resources, the natural resources, mm. you know, that form part of that biodiversity um, for survival. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about the, the the water resources. You know, we, we talk about the food food security. Um, so definitely, you know, we have we d we depend on the resources, but we also do have you know external factors that are beyond us. Mm -hmm. um, the changes, you know, in in climatic events um, that has come about, and it, and. I mean, if you really look at it, it is still, some of it is still linked to, you know, our, you know, actions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the challenge here now is being able to find a balance between the livelihoods, our livelihoods, mm -hmm. and protecting that biodiversity for okay. sustainability. Mm -hmm. you know, but so how, how human activities uh, affect biodiversity? Oh, well, as Alwyn has said, uh, we rely on these resources. So we need trees to, to build our homes. Mm -hmm. We need clean water to uh. bathe and to drink. Um, and so sometimes we have overexploited some of these resources. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have bad farming practices which de deplete our soils of the nutrients which we need. Mm -hmm. It depletes it of some of those beneficial viruses and bacteria and, and microorganisms which we need. So our actions have sometimes uh, had impacts on biodiversity and so that's why we can come in now and be the solution by changing our own human behavior. Definitely. Agreed. What do you do for our first rate? Awesome. You're mm -hmm. watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. Don't go away. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. 
All the artificial flavoring Sweeteners and colors too We consume and we don't spare a thought For the damage that they'll do the that Oh, they do. think about the children Think about the children How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution Use organic and join Excessive agrochemical use, additives and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. Today we are discussing International Day of Biological Diversity. And of course, we are discussing it uh, in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, the effects of biodiversity, um, a lot of it, the problems we have are man-made. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. uh, right now, we have a thriving apiculture industry in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can understand um, where biodiversity plays a key role in the success of such uh, 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 what they call um, an initiative, uh, an initiative, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. an enterprise, an enterprise. as work. Mm -hmm. um, what I know, farmers <coughs> are using a lot of chemicals, you know, and of course, uh, harsh chemicals. And uh, can you can you can you can you speak to that? I mean, the effect of of of, of um, you know, chemicals on, on, on agriculture production. Okay, one, one of the, over time we've noticed that there's a decline in bee population. Mm -hmm. um, bees are extremely important for food security. They mm -hmm. are pollinators, they go from plant to plant and they pollinate and they allow our crops to be able to flower and produce the foods that we, we eat. Um, bees and other pollinator mm -hmm. insects. Mm -hmm. When um, systemic pesticides are used, these are pesticides which don't really pick out specific um, organisms. They just kill everything that, that goes. We lose that function. Mm -hmm. We lose that ability of the bees to go around producing food for us. So it's clear in that in that way what we need to do. We either need to use safer pesticide management, uh, integrated, integrated pesticide management, ma management mm -hmm. utilize some of the chemicals with some of the natural so solutions, mm -hmm. but always to be conscious of where we are using it because mm -hmm. um, the forestry department is encouraging um, folks to plant the kinds of flowers and uh, trees that the bees like to forage on to produce that honey. And so we can't have an, a counter action in that we are spraying mindlessly mm -hmm. and, and, and inadvertently harming our bees. Yeah. Um, we've seen a lot of success in areas where w uh, weed, um, the, weed the, the weed whackers are used as mm -hmm. a to the chemicals so we know that there there is an impact on the insect population and mm -hmm. so that's just one small way yeah. if we know the value of the of the organism in our in it, the ecosystem in that link in that interconnection mm -hmm. then we can take an action to address it and to ensure that we still have it to continue doing that service that it is providing us with definitely from yeah. a forest standpoint um, are there other plant species that uh, have come to the fore where they can become extinct Mm. Well, um, I know there are, s there are some species that have been harvested, mm -hmm. you know, in the past for um, house, for building furniture, for making furniture, for building houses. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, some of the species were depended upon so heavily that they became threatened. Um, you have, for example, the um, laurier canel. Mm -hmm. um, you have those species. It's one of those species, you know, that has been threatened. Mm -hmm. um, you have the. Um, yeah, but but, but what, 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 what you all do? Mm -hmm. What what you, you all normally do um, to prevent that over harvesting? Uh, can it be done in a, in a mm -hmm. sustainable manner? Uh, is there a program to ensure that that happens? Well, the forestry department has had this program of selective harvesting. harvesting. For example, mm -hmm. you know, in the forest, you know, people who were into housemaking and uh, uh, 
timber production went into selective harvesting. Mm -hmm. So there were certain criteria that we would use mm -hmm. to be able to um, sell um, trees. Um, if the species had been, we had found that it had been over harvested, then, you know, in certain uh, locations, we would not remove remaining individuals, you know. Um, we would also look at the topographic area, how close it is, you know, to water sources. Mm -hmm. And even has been so specific that if you remove one tree, what damage that it will cause, you know, to the microclimate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did those things. Um, and we still continue. What has happened to is that in terms of the, the uh, timber industry, there's been a tremendous shift to imported mm -hmm. uh, lumber, mm -hmm. you know, and... Is the pressure? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that has eased the pressure, you know, to significant uh, levels. Um, a person may find it a lot more or, um, or easier to work with, you know, almost a finished product you know instead of having to go through the process of drying the local yeah, lumber yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, which yeah. can take you know significant time okay. the um, pencil <coughs> cedar is also very nice the pencil example. cedar another yes example. the pencil cedar yeah, is it's, it's another one and we've gone into actual um production mm -hmm. nursery production and um trying to re-establish areas where the plant the pencil cedar you mm -hmm. know would, would have been you know, in the past, trying to re-establish populations. But but the, the thing is, I mean, okay, <laughs> we are talking about biodiversity, biological D, every year. But is it just the D itself? What is happening throughout the year? Mm -hmm. I, I heard you mention earlier that, I mean, OECS is a program. Mm -hmm. Can you can you list elucidate? Sure. Um, so while we are discussing and you're asking these very good questions about what are the trends, what are the species that we're losing, mm -hmm. um, it, it reminds me of one of the other challenges to our biodiversity conservation efforts, which mm -hmm. is a lack of data, yes. especially locally. You know, mm -hmm. we do not um, have the the capacity to to prioritize uh, research and data collection in the way that we would like, and I'm sure. Um, Alwyn can attest to that as well. You know, mm -hmm. in some areas we we just don't have the data for every community and mm -hmm. so on. So mm -hmm. so that is a challenge, mm -hmm. and yeah. it is one of the the in the things that are being looked mm -hmm. at under this upcoming biospace initiative, which is being done by the OECS with the rest of the the Caribbean region, the member states. Um, that initiative will strengthen the capacity to manage biodiversity. So it will include training, purchase of the of equipment uh, such as drones and other monitoring equipment. Mm -hmm. It will also allow us to, uh, to do these assessments mm -hmm. at the national level mm -hmm. so that we have that kind of data and then we can monitor, we can see what our trends are locally. And then thirdly, under the Biospace Initiative, we will also build partnerships. So, mm -hmm. so now the, the, um, the private sector is realizing uh, that the need for biodiversity and how much they rely on it, we are forming some um, partnerships among the private sector, among non-government organizations, as well as members of the public. So everybody's getting involved and joining this effort to be better informed about biodiversity, to be able to make the kind of policy changes that are needed from the observations, and then to get everybody involved so that we can all be a part of the solution. So what's going to happen, okay, since we are recognizing I think Saturday, right? Is, is yes. It. Okay, what's happening on that day itself? <laughs> well, f for us right now, we aren't able to, because of the protocols COVID. and the COVID and everything, mm -hmm. everything will be done online. Mm -hmm. We have some Facebook challenges. You can check out the, the various websites. There will be a virtual exhibition um, being hosted by the OECS. So mm -hmm. you can go onto the OECS.int website and just see a list of all of the things that have been rolled out already. There's been a, a virtual photo competition of some beautiful images of biodiversity. And I encourage everybody to, mm -hmm. to go and look at yep. it if you're a, a, you know, a nature lover. And so, so most of the events are um, online or virtual, mm -hmm. but they, they just serve to reinforce this idea that you can be involved, that here is the biodiversity that's out there, and here are the different things you can do to enjoy it. The, are the schools involved in any way? 
this year not well the, the, there's a science fair competition and the photo competition which they've been involved in but we aren't doing school visits and mm -hmm. that sort of thing yeah, because yeah. of the setup mm -hmm. okay we're due for our last break <laughs> <laughs> you are watching agriculture on the move we'll be back soon Black Sigatoka is a fungal disease which affects the leaves of banana and plantain plants. It causes a reduction in the size of the bunch and the quality of the fruit. In commercial banana and plantain production, Black Sigatoka disease is controlled with chemical as well as non-chemical measures. Chemical measures involve the application of spray oil and fungicides. However, it is neither practical nor safe to use agrochemicals to control black cigatoka in backyard gardens. Non-chemical measures include good agronomic and cultural practices such as weed control and proper drainage. Affected parts of leaves should be pruned or cut off from the plant. Use a clean, sharp cutlass or knife. Infected leaves should be disposed of properly or added to a compost heap. For more information on how to treat and control Black Sigatoka on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Sigatoka Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894, or email bpmu at candw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. General, what I'm seeing here uh, is that every time there is a, a, a D, you know, we keep focusing on, and then for the rest of the year we hear nothing. <laughs> so can I ask a question? It seem that way. <laughs> you know, what is happening with biodiversity um, from organization standpoint? In other words, is there a link between OECS, forestry, yes. the private sector, oh, yes. you know? And is there a program, you know, and moving forward to see results? What it is, wh what, what are the achievements? Okay, um, that's a very good question. And I think we can answer it just by our presence here. So the OECS, mm -hmm. the forestry, sustainable development, we work very closely together. Um, we work on, with the private sector, we work on climate change initiatives, we work on biodiversity conservation. Um, the uh, biospace initiative, which is upcoming, will include all of these stakeholders as well as around the rest of the region. And while during the year there, uh, there would be the launch, there would be, you know, different um, initiatives to let the public know what's going on we of course take this opportunity to show what we've been doing mm -hmm. so um, the initiatives that we we have started embark embarking on would include a, a lot of it would include average persons who use biodiversity for their livelihoods so mm -hmm. for example um, the government of St. Lucia is, is designing a project where Folks who grow lassa, mm -hmm. they that pl that plant the lassa that gives the incense and so, those people can develop businesses out of it. So research will go into um, the composition of the plant because it is only found in Saint Lucia and in Martinique, in very small quantities. So it's a very valuable and rare plant, and we are blessed to have it. So the research is going to go into um, determining what is in that plant, what is its composition, and what else can it be used for? Can it be used for repellents can they be used for perfumes and so folks will be given the support both in terms of capacity and in finance to be able to roll out a, a program where they can create products using LASA mm -hmm. so so those are some of the things that are happening you know at the various levels we also have the policy level where you have to establish that enabling um, environment where your plant species are protected and persons mm -hmm. also understand the value of them both your plants and your animals and the ecosystems where they are found. So um, man managing the marine space, the mangroves, the rivers, the, the forest spaces, etc. Those are all things that we work on collaboratively throughout the year to ensure that whatever conservation action is, um, is taken, it doesn't just get eroded because some 
some agency didn't know or somebody dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. So we get all of the key players involved from infrastructure, tourism, forestry, mm -hmm. health, all of the different sectors to be part of the, the implementation of these activities for conservation. What comes to mind is the traditional medicine plants. Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, forestry, uh, well, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you had the herbarium. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Right? Uh, yeah, the but herbarium. I, I'm thinking here, uh, do you have a nursery where you all are able to identify plants our forefathers used, mm -hmm. you know, traditional med medicine and, for us and the science? Because right now we're using, uh, from those, synthetically we're using, mm -hmm. you know, the yes, the, the products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that come out of so it. Where, where yes, are we, where yes. Are we? Um, you're talking about the medicinal garden. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, we have had um, the medicinal garden for a long time, um, over 20 years, yes. mm -hmm. I think. Uh, what might have happened is at different times, um, you would have had maybe a little more emphasis, you know, being placed on the medicinal garden you know at any one point in time but it it is an initiative that uh that we always um encourage always have um and uh you know realizing you know the importance even when we look at what you know our parents our grandparents yeah. you know used in the past you know to treat different illnesses yeah. um, we cannot throw away you know that part of our heritage mm -hmm. uh, which is still very relevant you know to us today um, the common colds mm -hmm. yeah. we still yeah, go to our how relevant is, is <coughs> it if it's if, you know, um, is there somebody or persons out there in terms of livelihood mm. to multiply it you know and, and, and get plants mm -hmm. out there as a you know mm -hmm. as so a business you know they without um, mm -hmm. thing, th the thing is, um, you ought to look at markets, right. mm -hmm. you know, the markets for the end product. Right. I want to go back a little to the lancin, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because traditionally the way lancin is being harvested is that, you know, the persons would cut the back of the tree and um, they cut it now maybe in the next uh, two weeks or so, pass back and pick up the raisin, mm -hmm. the dried raisin. Mm -hmm. Now, over time, that practice can actually kill the tree, Correct. you know, over time. So the, the, the Lancer initiative, you know, which started um, way back, um, was to look at uh, harvesting regimes that are more sustainable, mm -hmm. you know, and also, you know, as Janel did mention, looking at uh, the, the various products, you know, and the market. Mm -hmm. um, and that is important. You know, if we are moving into something and um, there isn't a readily available market, um, sometimes you spend, you know, quite a bit of resources mm -hmm. developing. Mm -hmm. You do the research and then only to find out it is hard mm -hmm. okay. getting yeah. an outlet. outlet right, you yeah, know, so yeah, so that so can yeah. significantly affect. Yes, the so um, as we end, uh, um, we just don't have much time left. Um, mm -hmm. Any final words and any mm -hmm. encouragement that you'd like to leave with the public? Well, I want to just say quickly that one of the initiatives that St. Lucia participated in was the Access and Benefit Sharing Initiative. And under that, we developed a list of, um, it was a, an OECS initiative, other members of the, the region, we developed out of it a list of all of the plants that can be, uh, that are being used mm -hmm commercially already. So we are now taking this work to the next stage with an, an upcoming um, ABS regional initiative which will strengthen the information that we have. So the research is continuing mm -hmm. and the plans for developing these resources are continuing and soon we will be reaching out to members of the public for them to, to know how they can be involved. Pauline, okay. final words of you? Well, it is important. I mean, yes, we take one day, you know, to commemorate the observance, you know, of an event. In this case, it is uh, International Day of, of Biodiversity. Um, I want the public to know that we are all interconnected in this way. We are connected with biodiversity. And uh, the onus is on us 
intelligent beings to take care mm -hmm. of our biodiversity. In that way, we would also be taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Very well, well Jenny, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Have a happy okay. biodiversity day. Thank you very much. And <laughs> thank I you, Sydney. Happy <laughs> biodiversity day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> and then, of course, I'm hoping that you <laughs> will, you know, continue to ensure and to <laughs> educate the public, especially the young people, yes. to continue the tradition. Yes. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. You've been thank watching you. Agriculture on the Move. Thank you for viewing the program and remember yeah. agriculture is our business and biodiversity is also our business. Okay. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye and God bless. Agriculture on the move. 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 Oh, 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 oh,